What's up brand builders, Stephen Horahan here at brandmasteracademy.com and in this video you're going to learn six of the best and most unique branding strategies that you can leverage. So you can not only differentiate yourself from the competition, but give your audience a compelling meaning to choose your brand. Now, if you're new to the channel and you wanna build brands that go beyond the visual and the logo using strategy, psychology, and creative thinking, then you're in the right place. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. If you wanna fast track your results, make sure you grab the program strategy blueprint. It's a free download and the link is in the description. Now, there are many brand strategies that a brand can use to engage its audience and resonate with who they are. Now, some of those strategies are innovative and groundbreaking. Other strategies are a little bit more simplistic and resounding. But at the end of the day, the role of the brand is to get the audience to remember the business. That's the role that the brand plays. And the best way to do that is to give them a meaning as to why they should remember the brand. So that's what strategy is all about. And in this video, I wanna give you six unique strategies that you can use to give your audience meaning. Strategy number one is experiential branding. Now, there is brand experience and experiential branding, and they're often confused, but they are distinctly different. Every brand has a brand experience, or better put, every brand provides a brand experience to the audience. Now, whether or not they take the time to design that brand experience is irrelevant. The audience will engage the brand or have an experience with the brand, and depending on what that experience is like and the associations they have through that experience will depend on how they remember that brand. So every single brand provides a brand experience, whether they design it or not. Experiential branding, on the other hand, is all about actively designing sensory engagements with the audience, and these sensory engagements are usually very unique. And the benefit and the advantage of these sensory experiences is that they're easily remembered. They're easily stored in the memory, and therefore, it's easier for the audience to recall the brand. Now, a study by Mood Media found that nine out of 10 sensory experiences drive consumers back to the store. So in other words, if you are providing sensory experiences, if you're providing experiences that engage the senses, sight, sound, smell, touch, these are the senses that really engage the brain and engage those memory structures and create those memory structures. And they provide us with a means to get back to that brand experience and remember that brand. Now, of course, not every single touch point needs to be an actively designed sensory experience, but the more sensory experiences that you can provide within your overall brand experience, so sight, sound, touch, smell, the more likely that your audience is going to store that experience to memory and recall your brand later on. So let's have a look at an experiential branding example from WWF, and this was for stopping wildlife trafficking. Now, WWF was on a mission to raise awareness amongst the public in London around the issue of animal trafficking. And to engage the senses, they created a life-sized elephant hologram to roam the streets of London for 24 hours. And that image of an elephant walking towards you on the streets of London is not something that you'd forget in a hurry. So this is a really good example of experiential branding, really engaging those senses and helping the audience to store that experience to memory. Strategy number two is activist branding. Now, this one is not for the faint of heart because there's very little room for error here. Now, the reason that I say that is that although consumers have thrown the gauntlet down to brands to be more vocal about issues within society or political issues, there's also a lot of skepticism within the general public that brands are trying to woke wash, which is the term that's been given to brands who are trying to take advantage of these issues by aligning themselves when there's no real substantial action behind it. So if this is a, is a strategy that you are considering, if there's strong belief behind a cause that you wanna get behind, then really think long and hard about using this strategy because as I said, there's not a lot of room for error with this one. So let's take a look at brand activism or activist branding with Ben & Jerry's. Now, while many brands tiptoe around sensitive issues or like to dip a toe in to gauge the temperature, Ben & Jerry's don't subscribe to doing things by halves. Quite clearly, without fear of losing business to customers that take an opposing view or anything other than what they believe, they took a firm position 
on how they saw the murder of George Floyd. And this is what they put on their social media page. The murder of George Floyd was the result of inhumane police brutality that is perpetuated by a culture of white supremacy. Again, not doing anything's not doing anything half baked here. They really went all in on this and they don't really care that other people might have an opposing view or other people might view things differently. They aren't afraid of losing customers. They're more committed to really putting a flag in the ground for what they believe is right. Moving on to strategy number three, and we have a look at personality branding. Now, this strategy is a lot more palatable than the previous strategy of brand activism, and it's a lot more applicable to most brands as well. There's nothing technical about this approach. It's really about defining who the audience is, really understanding them on an intimate level and the type of communication that they would respond to and then giving them that communication, engaging with them on that level and really meeting them where they are, meeting them with what appeals to them, what type of characteristics and traits appeal to them and really giving them that personality, engaging with them with that personality. So this strategy is a lot more simplistic and a lot more resounding and it's really about connecting with who the audience is on a personal level. Now, the beauty about this strategy is that it's not complicated. It's effective, it's efficient, and it's economical as well. And if it's done right, it can really engage the audience with who they are and what they want and really connect with them on an emotional level and capture their hearts as well. So let's have a look at a personality branding example from Old Spice. Now, Old Spice was considered an old man's brand that most men below 40 wouldn't ever consider. And even if they did, they probably wouldn't tell anybody. Then in 2010, realizing the aging brand image that they had in the market and the declining market share that went with that, Procter & Gamble engaged global agency Wyden & Kennedy to reposition the brand to appeal to the younger generation. And the result was a viral campaign oozing humor and personality that reshaped the image of Old Spice in the mind of that younger segment. And the result was a 125% increase in sales and the coveted top spot for brands in the men's body wash category. Now again, although this campaign was super successful, we can attribute the success of this campaign down to a single element of their repositioning strategy, which was based largely around their personality and how they engage their audience. So again, this is not complex stuff here, but very, very effective. Strategy number four is distinctive asset branding. Now, many branding experts really push the idea that differentiation is king and you have to differentiate or die. Now, Byron Sharp, who is a marketing professor in Australia and a well-renowned marketing professor at that, takes a completely opposing view and doesn't believe that differentiation is possible at all. Instead, he promotes the idea that brands need to be distinctive so that the audience can remember that brand during the buying decision. Now, I don't really take the same view as Byron Sharp, although I don't have that kind of background and that kind of reputation to be able to question his logic, but really I believe that there is a balance here and you can differentiate, but I also believe that distinctive branding assets are absolutely critical when it comes to being remembered. Now, the reason these distinctive brand assets are effective is that they create memory structures. And the more memory structures that we have of a brand, the more chance we have of finding our way back to that brand experience or remembering that brand during the buying decision. So create as many distinctive brand assets as possible, put them out into the marketplace, use them on your social media pages, on your website, on your brochures, or any single touch point that your brand has, create those unique visual cues and give your audience the best possible chance of remembering your brand. Let's take a look at a distinctive asset branding example from Burberry. Now, the Burberry brand is an iconic British brand created by Thomas Burberry in 1856. Now, although the brand is known for its high street fashion, one of the most distinctive brand assets which has supported its success has been its iconic check pattern. Now, this Scottish tartan design was created in the 1920s and it was initially only sewn into the inset of coats, but 40 years later, the pattern emerged from the inset of coats to become a fashion trend in and of itself that's synonymous with quality to this day. This pattern is a distinctive asset that marketing professor Mark Ritson refers to as a brand code, 
which he suggests leads to brand salience. Strategy number five is heritage branding. Now, heritage branding leverages the history and deep roots of a brand. And sometimes these brands are decades or even centuries old. So this strategy is not for every brand. It really has to have that deep history. And that's what this strategy aims to leverage. It aims to take advantage of that deep history. Now, the idea here is that we tend to trust brands that have been around for a long time. And that's because they've gone through generations of people who have obviously trusted and supported this brand over time. And those deep roots and that deep history gives us a tangible connection to the past. So we do have this really innate trust for brands that have been around for such a long time and do have that history. And that's what heritage branding is all about. So let's take a look at a heritage branding example with Hermes. Now Hermes is a French luxury goods manufacturer and it's actually the oldest fashion brand in the world. It was founded in 1837 in Paris and Thierry Hermes originally created saddles and other leather riding gear, which provides us a bit of a window into what the world looked like back then. The main strength of the Hermes brand has remained intact throughout generations, and that's their love affair with craftsmanship. Although the brand boasts an unshakable reputation and image in the market, the image hasn't been created by the branding department, but by the production department. As former CEO Jean-Louis Dumas stated, we don't have a policy of image, we have a policy of product. Strategy number six is lifestyle branding. Now, lifestyle branding takes the focus away from the products and services that the brand sells and shines a light on the lifestyle that the audience desires. Now, this is a much more passive strategy than other aggressive sales strategies, and it's much more welcome by the audience as well because this strategy involves shining a light or bringing to life the idea of the perfect life of that audience. So in order to do this effectively, you really need to know exactly who that audience is and the type of lifestyle that they desire and then go all in on bringing that lifestyle to life and then use your products or services as a means to get them to that lifestyle. So that is the premise of this strategy. That is the real cornerstone of this strategy is bringing that lifestyle to life and then using the products and services that your brand offers as a way to get there. Now, I can't think of a better example of a lifestyle brand or lifestyle branding than Red Bull. Now, remember, this is a company that's been built on a single product, which is a can of sugary water. Now, it's energy boosting sugary water, of course, but it's still sugary water. Now, Red Bull's entire marketing strategy is based not around promoting the features or benefits of their sugar water, but an aligned idea with a very, very specific lifestyle. This brand has not only aligned itself with the word extreme, it's produced a production media house to support extreme sports athletes and they've ingrained themselves in the culture of that lifestyle and they've become synonymous with the culture. They've really become part of the culture of extreme sports. And when you think of extreme sports, you think of Red Bull. So that is lifestyle branding in action. It's really painting a picture of this ideal life of this extreme sports life and ingraining the brand in the culture of that lifestyle. Now, branding is nothing if not a way to provide meaning to the audience as to why they should choose our brand. Now, what that meaning is and the way we provide that meaning to our audience is what the strategy is all about. So as we sit down to develop our brands and develop out our strategies, we need to ask the question, what is the meaning that we want our audience to have with our brand? Now, the answer to that question should be the driver of absolutely everything that the brand does from that point. And then that over time is what your audience will come to associate with your brand. That is the meaning that they will store in their minds. And that is the reason that they will choose your brand over your competitors. Now, once you define what that meaning is, it's all about communicating it. If you wanna learn how to develop the method and the manner to communicate your meaning, then this video will help you out. Until next time, Brand Like a Master, and I'll see you in the next video.